talk about why, uh, why I wrote the film. I realised how drama could be a really good way of telling a message and um, getting ideas across and maybe even um, sharing knowledge, um, even changing attitudes because people get engaged with the, with the story, with the cast um, and see the, um, the implications of what's happening in a much stronger way than if I was just explaining um, a story. Um, so I think the, the, the sort of emotional buy-in when, when people are watching a film like Sunrise, Not Sunset. One thing I was interested to know, Paul, was that, you know, you've made really big feature films, Solomon at Gaynor, and most recently, uh, 23 Walks. And I wondered what it was like for you making this, it's not just that it's a short film, but it's, a, it's quite a didactic film, really, isn't it? It's got a very strong message. Well... Part of the challenge for me was to make it less didactic and to work as a drama, you know, and, and not, not as a sort of educational lesson. So I think we just work together on the script. You have these characters uh, and you have some lovely humour in their dialogue. And, um, for me, it was important that it worked as a drama in its own right. And, and that was fun for me, you know, to figure that out. And also because... I'm committed to the human rights, so the topic, you know, meant something to me. And then the challenge was, well, how can we make a film that has, that works dramatically, and where you really feel this couple's enforced separation and their loss in that separation, and how up against it they feel, uh, with you know the different authorities all telling them that this is how this has got to be. That you feel the feel the depth of that um, before everything is made all right. There's no kind of virtue of the threat of the human rights act. So yeah, it was fun to do. And also, I hadn't directed a film for a while, so it was a great way to get back in the saddle. It was fun. As I just think Paul achieved that so well to put it across as a drama. I think it's quite common for um, people who saw it to come away in tears and in a way yes. that sort of proves the point about the emotional engagement, doesn't it? Um, yes. And also about the way, you know, uh, you and um, Paul and the rest of the cast were able to put that across. What was it like working with me? Oh, wonderful. Occasionally little problems. Well, we go in opposite directions. I lay there goes in one and I mind the other. One of them is wrong and the other is not wrong. <laughs> it's, and that's the problem. Paul, what was it like directing Layla and Hoff? They were going off in different directions. No, it was a great delight. I mean, what you've just seen is an example of Hoff's mischievousness, which... Uh, I really wanted to capture, and I think you do capture it in the character on the, that he plays in the film. We all seemed to click as a team, didn't we? Oh, yeah. The, the chemistry mm. was excellent. I thought that actually, you know, we put a lot of work into the casting. I thank Raluca for that, because everybody, you know, was at a certain level, and everybody kept the whole thing, you know at that level um, and for me I think 50% of directing a drama is in the casting so and actually casting you two was a delight because we were going to interview you separately we didn't know that you were together and then Layla said oh well can I bring my husband along and I said yeah well, why not you know, let's give it a try and of course, once you two were there, I did some with you separately and some with you, some work with you together. You know, the truthfulness of you as a couple so outweighed any other benefit you might have got. It's strange how you can see the chemistry between a real life couple, isn't it? And you can get that with an acting couple or a performing couple. I, don't, I think what we got with you was pretty special. I remember when Paul um, phoned me up and said, we've got uh, a, a real, 
elderly Jewish couple to play the elderly Jewish couple in the film. I'm thinking that was just perfect. So what did you think about this story where they were being sent to different care homes? I, I was so, I thought, so privileged to be told about it because we didn't know that it was against the law. And, and I'm sure, I mean, anybody I've asked and told about this, they don't know it's against the law. So it's amazing that the human rights charity have brought this into the open, isn't it? That's a really good point because the, um, the Human Rights Act applies to all of us, everybody, um, you know, ordinary people in our ordinary lives. And from what you read in the media, um, or from what politicians say, you'd often think that it was only for people that we think of as unpopular, like terrorists or, or prisoners. They have human rights as well, but also it can apply to um, teenagers, it applies to um, children, um, it applies to people with particular health conditions, mental health problems, um, disabled people. Um, there's, there's lots of situations in which the Human Rights Act has really helped to, to balance things, to make sure that um, that the right decisions are made, taking everybody's interests into account. What was the most difficult um, aspect technically of making the film? Coping with a tired old couple. <laughs> <laughs> no, by no means. I think it's always difficult on a low budget. Uh, both, both bringing it in on time and also finding locations that work. I think we did find some really good locations. The most difficult thing was squishing into a small, very small car in order to shoot um, due to the drive to the care home. That's a very sweet little scene, you know, it worked out really well because in it, Edith is saying how much it hurts being apart. The Human Rights Act is under threat at the moment. Um, it's there's plans to um, reduce it, to amend it, to take away some of the protections in it. Um, and that's you know, a real worry, obviously, to all of us who are involved with human rights. I'm hoping really that the, the film um, sort of demonstrates why the Human Rights Act is, is a safety net for all of us and a safety net that we really don't want to lose. A, a fantasy I sometimes um, had before I knew about this act, because I can be a bit outrageous. And I, I imagine myself in such a situation when I would just jump into Alfred's bed in the home and just refuse to move. The um, Human Rights Act is really interesting in that you don't have to, you know, go to court to make the law work. So, um, you know, in the film you see that the couple have a demonstration they go to the press but they never go to court and they just raise the issue and some people only have to like raise the issue and have a chat with the um, decision makers the authorities to get them to consider human rights and then the decision can get changed in the film the authorities who are represented by a kind of a social worker and a, and a reporter one of the things that we wanted to do was show that they're stuck in their roles as well. The, the reporter is cynical because have you seen it all before? Um, and, you know, what's one more elderly couple? Which I have to say we're seeing now around COVID. And when I look at Layla and half of what a special elderly couple they are, you, you just makes you realise how inhuman some of the talk going on is. So anyway, there's that report of cynicism and the, the social worker is trapped in a set of rules and regulations that she didn't make, but she has to enforce. And, I, you know, I think those performances really capture the way that they're trapped in, in their preconceptions and also the rules surrounding them. They're not bad people, um, mm. but they're stuck with having to deliver a bad edict. I think that's really true. And I think that is what, uh, um, one of the reasons why bringing in this extra issue of human rights is a way of sort of enabling them to move out of that um, sort of very narrow focus that they've been forced into through their roles. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that you sort of added very much in the way that you 
uh, directed. And I do hope that this film will be seen everywhere and really get out there because it's not just a Jewish problem, is it? It's everywhere and everybody has to know. And it's not just old people. I see horrible stories where um, a troubled teenager is sent far hundreds of miles away to a suitable place, ha ha ha. Um, and it's just heartbreaking. One of the things I'm really proud about is that Sunrise Not Sunset has been selected by the UK Jewish Film Festival. That's such yeah. an accolade. Paul, I mean, obviously you've been um, Oscar nominated for Solomon Agena. So what does it feel for you to, to get a film into the Jewish Film Festival? Well, it's lovely. It's really nice. It's very feels very sweet. It means that my work is still out there. It's just so exciting, isn't it? What do you think about being in the Jewish Film Festival? What do I think? It's very nice. Exciting. Um, quite exciting, yeah. But it could be much wider, as you said. That would be even more exciting. If we could see it on television, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I just think, I think everyone would like to know that in May last, we celebrated our diamond wedding, 60th anniversary. Wow. So, Out of tough. 